Howdy, 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 folks. Uh, today we are going to be talking about the Consolidated Outland Mustang Alpha and its four purchasable variants. Uh, I love this ship. I'm actually pretty excited uh, to do this one because I really like flying these little things. Uh, but before we get into that, let's talk about uh, some of our housekeeping stuff, some of our upcoming projects. Uh, there's going to be a Cutlass, a Drake Cutlass Buyer's Guide coming out uh, either later today or tomorrow. Uh, I'm working on a single seat fighter comparison. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun to do. Uh, I'm also working on a 319 prospector mining guide. And last but not least is the secret project. I have another clue. Uh, the second letter in the type of video it is, is an A as an alpha. All right, well, housekeeping's out of the way. Let's dig into these ships a little bit. So I like to start with cost. Uh, so the Mustang Alpha is the cheapest of the bunch. Clocks in at $45 for a, for a starter pack and $30 US uh, for a standalone, which is a great value, but we'll discuss that a little later. Next up is the Mustang Beta, which the standalone for that is $40. The Delta retails for $65. And the Gamma retails for $55. Uh, all of these are purchasable in-game. The Mustang Alpha is 251,400 Alpha UEC. The Beta is 404,000 Alpha UEC. Delta, 763,600 Alpha UEC, and the Gamma is 627,500 Alpha UEC. Uh, the Delta and the Gamma you can get at Astro Armada over in Arcor, and the Alpha and Beta you purchase at New Deal in Lorville in Hurston. Uh, the Alpha and the Gamma are both rentable as well. So if you want to test them out before you buy, uh, that's always an option. So let's dig into some of the stats real quick. So they all have the same uh, HP on the hulls. They all have the same shield HP. The hull HP is 8,431, and the shield HP is 2,700. DPS is a little different amongst some of them. So the Alpha and the Beta have the same DPS stock at 554. They're mounting the M4A laser cannons. I do recommend swapping those out for a couple of uh, Badgers. Uh, the Delta here has a much higher DPS stock at 1009. And it's got, I want to say, a couple of Badgers and then M4As as well. The Gamma has the least DPS at 497. It's mounting two M3A laser cannons, one on each wing. Uh, the SCM speeds are all a little bit different. The Alpha clocks in at 191 meters a second. The Beta, 188. The Gamma, 184. And of course, the Racing Gamma at 241. I believe I called that a gamut. That's the Delta. Good gravy. Uh, the maximum speeds are also all a little bit different. The Alpha is the slowest with the maximum speed of 1,160. The Beta clocks in at 1,216. The Delta, 1,227. And the Gamma at 1,341 meters a second. So some general similarities of the ships, all of them except for the Gamma have that chin turret on the front, uh, which is kind of neat except for uh, if you get rammed in the front of your Mustang, and I talk about this in my uh, starter pack videos, 
If you get rammed in the front and you're flying a Mustang, uh, there's a good chance those guns are going to fall off. You don't have to worry about that on the Gamma, but uh, just something to note. They all have a weapon hard point on each wing as well. Uh, size 2, I think on the Delta it's size 3. Uh, they're all very agile. I mean, for the starter ships, they're probably the most agile. In the ships that are below like 800,000 Alpha UEC, like these are kind of the cream of the crop. Um, I I like to think of them as they, they punch above their weight. I mean, a well-flown Mustang is going to be able to f stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with just about anything. Uh when they're upgraded, uh, they are they are very capable PVE bounty ships. Um, I mean, are you going to get further with, you know, a Gladius or or an Arrow? Probably, but you're going to end up with the same cap in general that those two ships run into of HP and DPS just not matching for the highest tier bounties. One of the things I did want to bring up. I forgot to put it in my notes, but I noticed it when I was setting the ships up, and I I always find it interesting. Uh, they're well lit. I don't know if you noticed. Uh, this is the middle of the night here on Microtech, which is notoriously dark, and you can quite clearly see them, except for the uh, rain on my uh, face shield there. Uh, but they're all you know, well lit up, and it might seem like a minor thing, but the lights on each of these, you know, when you push L on your keyboard, turn your ship lights on, are extremely bright, uh, which is great if you're trying to do uh, certain types of missions with some teammates, uh, being able to light up the area for them during those night missions. All right, well, let's dig into the individual ships a little bit. So the Alpha is the only one that can carry cargo, and it carries it in this handy little cargo bay that pops down at the back. It drops down. You open it up, and you can you can carry cargo in there. You can also use that cargo bay to do uh, delivery missions, research missions, those kinds of things. I'll talk about that a little more in depth in my uh, starter ship review for this ship. I'm not going to dig into it too much. Uh, as far as the actual starter ships go, with the exception of the Avenger Titan, I think the Mustang Alpha is the most versatile because it's got the cargo uh, and it, it it's just going to fight better than any of them until you get to the Avenger Titan. One thing of note on this ship, and it's going to come up in a couple more of the variants here, is there's no interior space. So when you get in your pilot seat, that is all the interior space you're going to get. There is an external storage bay, and they all have this. So you can click this open storage, and you can store stuff in it. You know, it's, it's a neat little option. But, you know, outside of storing boxes in the cargo pod for the Alpha only, uh, you're not going to be able to do uh, delivery missions and things like that. That's the one weakness of the other Mustangs. You don't have to worry about it as much with this. Uh, and one other note, the wings are, I mean, they're not super fragile if you compare them to like the Pisces or the 100 series by Origin, but they are still kind of fragile. So y you've got to be careful. You know, it's not as big a problem as it is on some other ships, but you know, if you've already been rammed in the front and you're down to just your wing guns, you need to be paying attention to the damage your wings take. All right, let's dig into the beta a little bit. So I think this might be my favorite of the bunch just just because of how kind of over the top it is. So this one does have a interior space. Uh, and if you're like me and you just bought your beta and you're like, man, I want to go see the bed and stuff. I want to see what's all in there. And you get in and then you hold Y and it, it just gets back out of the ship. Uh, that's because that's not how you actually get to it. So you get in your seat. You're going to hold F. You're going to look down to the right. When it says exit to rear, you're going to click right there. We're going to come on back. And it's got a full kitchenette. A 
nice little bed there. And a uh, whole bathroom, little shower, toilet, all the all the necessities of life that you need when you're out uh, pathfinding. That's what the uh, career path for the ship is going to be. Uh, this ship does uh, have a little bit better uh, QT range than the other variants. And all in all, it's, it's a fun little ship. But it doesn't really have a lot to stand apart. Uh, it loses the cargo pod. And because of how you get into the internal space, you can't carry uh, delivery boxes and stuff. So it's it's neat in concept, but until pathfinding gameplay really gets developed, there's not a huge use for this. Uh, but I do think at the moment is a great time to buy one if you're wanting to expand your uh, actual RSI fleet uh, because... I don't think it's going to stay $40. I think once Pathfinding gets expanded, that ship's going to go up a little bit. But that is all just my opinion. Don't come at me if I'm wrong. Uh, it does have the same weapons loadout stock as the Alpha. You may have noticed uh, my Alpha does not have a stock loadout. I actually fly it quite a bit, so I, I've changed out some of the parts. Uh, but it's just got the two M4As on the nose stock, but you can put the weapons on the wings as well all right now on to the delta i'm not sure why my guy's walking like he broke a leg or something but oh well uh the delta has a pretty massive firepower boost over the others uh, once again it's got no cargo pod it also has no interior space however uh it does get these rocket pods which I don't think they actually do anything right now, but if that gets uh, fixed out, that'd be a pretty nice surprise for ground attack. Uh, you know, if you're doing a, a big uh, battle with another org or something and they've got tanks, you could use those rockets. That's, this is just my idea, so I don't, I don't know if that's where they're heading with it, but that seems like a really neat idea for it. Uh, it gets a size up on the wings, so instead of having to mount size ones, you can actually mount size two guns on the wings, which is a pretty nice thing. Cause that means overall your your DPS capabilities are a little higher in this than they are on the others. And it felt, I mean, it feels a little more agile. It might not be as fast at SCM, but in terms of maneuverability, it, it feels like it turns a little quicker, rotates a little quicker than the alpha or the beta. Last up is the racing variant, uh, the Gamma. Now, the Gamma is kind of unique. Well, of course it's unique. It's a racing ship. Uh, it has a blazing SCM speed of 241, which is right up there with the much, much more expensive racing ships. Um, it's got a great maximum speed. Uh, the only downside to this ship over the other three, if you're, if you're trying to use it for things outside of racing, is that it only gets the, the two size one mounts on the wings. So that's not a lot of DPS. None of them, none of the Mustangs equip missiles. So you're relying on two little guns to protect yourself. So it can get, it can get a little rough. Uh, since it's a racing ship, of course, there's no cargo bay. There's no interior space. In fact, where all of that would go. There's a whole extra engine, which is kind of cool. Uh, it gives this thing, if you're flying in third person and you're looking at it from the rear, uh, it gives this ship a an interesting uh, appearance. All right, so some of my personal opinions about these ships in general is the, the Alpha is the most versatile. Obviously, it's got the cargo pod. Uh, and at the moment, with pathfinding not being fully implemented, uh, the beta just doesn't have a whole lot of purpose other than just being kind of a cool little thing to use every now and then and actually a pretty nice paint job. Uh, the Delta is, is the best fighter of the bunch. I mean, obviously they all handle about the same, but it's just got that firepower bump that just makes it a much more uh, heavy hitter. The Gamma is actually a really great uh, entry-level racing ship. 
Uh, racing ships are a lot of fun, but they're also, I mean, like any of the more specialized ships, there's a bit of a tax on on their purchase. That's in-game or uh, on the RSI website. So it's kind of neat that you can get a very specialized ship for much less than any of the other specialized ships like that. Uh, I think that all of these ships uh, represent a great value for their price because they all perform well in their intended roles. The Alpha is intended to be a versatile ship. It does that. It's super cheap. The Beta, uh, when pathfinding comes in, super cheap. Has all the little little bells and whistle things that you want in an exploration ship with that interior uh, and also the extra range for quantum jumps. The Delta the firepower all that the rockets i think are going to make it great for ground attack in a way that a lot of the other fighters won't be able to necessarily compete with especially when you're considering it's you know it's a little over half the price of a gladius uh, and the racing ship of course the gamma great little flyer uh, very maneuverable and that speed is just the speed and the acceleration uh, make it a really fun little ship to zip around those tracks in well, this has been uh, my comparison guide for the uh, Mustang series by Consolidated Outland. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, please hit that like and subscribe button. Click that bell icon to get notified when I release new content. Uh, I'm, I'm doing my best to get a video out every day. Uh, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. The, the channel is growing, and I, I appreciate that. That is definitely uh, all on you guys. And uh, it... It means a lot to me. You know, it's just a small one-man operation. I don't have a, a big crew helping me do these. It's me and sometimes my wife and my one of my kids helping me with the editing. So I'm doing the best I can. Uh, if you don't like what I'm doing, that's cool. Do me a favor, though. Before you hit that dislike button, take 10 seconds, hit the comments, and uh, tell me where I lost you. Tell me what I can do to uh, improve. I want to make content that's fun, that's engaging, that's informative. And... Uh, any way I can help do that, I want to implement. All right, folks. Well, that's about it. Can't wait to get back out there, and I can't wait to see you all out there in the verse.